Time for another board game review, and this time we have Zooscape. Zooscape! This was sent to me by TMG, and uh, the designer is Hisashi Hayashi. The animals are loose! It's up to the zookeepers to get everyone back in their cages. But lots of things can happen while you're chasing critters. In this game, you must show you're the best zookeeper by rounding up the most points worth of animals. But remember that all the animals need enough space in their cage to stay happy. So Zooscape's a card game. Uh, it's a pretty short game. Uh, the box says like 15 to 30 minutes. Really, it's not even 30. It's pretty short. You have all these different animal cards and I'll kind of go through them, but they're pretty samey. Um, and what you do in the beginning is you, admit you shuffle them and make five decks. And the number of cards in each deck depends on how many people are you're playing with. Uh, this game can play up to... Six, so it's three to six players. And then any cards that are not in those piles are sent to the box and unused. So if you see here, here's a chameleon card, here's a lemurs card. They all have different numbers, which represent points. Um, and they also have symbols, which I'll explain. There are fish cards that are worth five points, and these are basically like if you couldn't get jack shit, you get a, you get a sympathy fish card. These are zookeeper cards, and each player has these, and you use these to decide which side you're going to split. I'll explain all that in a second. Finally, here's a manager card, a uh, first, second card, and a clipboard card. And those are what the cards look like. One thing I like is that the art is really nice. It's this kind of beautiful watercolor look. Um, all the animals look really, really well. Just, the art is gorgeous, so it's got that going for it. And so here's the basic flow of the game. So you set out a pile. Um, in this case, we're let's say we're playing with three players, so we have eight cards. Now let's take a look at some of these cards. So the elephant card has eight points, and as you can see here, um, that means uh, the sort of cage limit for your elephants is one. That means that card is worth eight points as long as you have only one elephant. So if you have more than one elephant, so let's say three elephants, each one actually you lose a point. So it's a game about managing, uh, you want to get a lot of points, but if you uh, go get too many of one animal and go over the cage limit, you're going to start losing points. Now one person is the zoo manager. And what the zoo manager does is they take this first second card and they place it anywhere they want in there. Let's say I'll do this, not worrying about the actual strategy, just showing you how it looks. Now as you can see the line is split into two groups. First, here, and second. Each group has to contain at least one card. In this case there's four cards on both groups. And then you also put this clipboard card anywhere you want. Let's say I'm going to put it in group one, oh that's upside down, in the group one right here. Now, what everyone does is they take their zookeeper cards, which I showed you, and as you can see, there's a um, second one and there's a first one, right? So what you do is you secretly choose, am I going to take the first group or the second group, and you put whichever card you put face down. Now, let's say you're the only person to choose group one. Let's say everyone else chooses group two and you choose group one. That means you get all the cards in group one and those are your points. If there's one group where no one selects it, all the cards from that group are placed under the clipboard. Like so. And if the clipboard card is in a group that is not selected by any player, that card and all the cards under it are handed to the current zoo manager, who will then put it into a new group when they split the groups again. Let's say one person picked group one and two people picked group two. P group or person one gets all these, but then the other two players have to split this group now. So the zoo manager passes that zoo manager card to the person on the left, and that new person is the zoo manager. So what they'll do is they'll take the first and second card and split this group into two groups. It doesn't have to be in the middle, it can be this or whatever. You're basically trying to strategize and looking at other people's cards and what you have and going, okay, so like the snake card has a two snake limit, uh, you see that some of your friends have uh, already have two snakes, so you know that they're not gonna want this card, or else it's going to make all their snakes uh, useless. And that's the main focus of the game, is splitting the group in strategic ways so that you can try to get what you want, but you also want to make sure that other players don't get what they want and try to maybe force them to take cards they don't want. It's an interesting mechanic. Does it work exactly as it should? I don't know about that. Now, you keep splitting it until each person has picked one group at least. But if you get down to one card left, and that like a person has not picked a group, they get one of those fish cards I was showing you. You didn't get any animals? Well, here's a pity fish card. Five points, not bad, but remember, there's a two card limit, so if you have two, more than two fish, they become worthless. You can enjoy Sophie's tail there. Now, once every player has picked a group of cards or gotten a fish, 
Um, the player who has the clipboard, because uh, you pick up the clipboard with the group of animals if it's in that group, they also get all the cards underneath that clipboard. And that person will be the new zoo manager at the beginning of the next round. So you play with five decks and you line them up with each deck, group them, get the points, and that's pretty much it. Gameplay is fairly simple. There's a few things I kind of have issues with, and I feel like it's not balanced particularly well, but I'll get into that in a second. Before I get into my opinions on the game, I'll just show you a few other cards that are kind of interesting. Um, you've got the Hunter card, which makes you lose four points. The Vet card, you have to discard two cards immediately. The Wild Animals card makes you draw a random card from the box that wasn't used. And the Chameleon immediately becomes a copy of the animal you have the most of. So those cards kind of complicate things, and you just go through the five decks, like I said. Now here's my hot take. Here's my, one of my main issues with it. Um, in a game like this, where it's about, um, you gotta make sure you don't get more than like two snakes or two elephants or whatever, one elephant, two snakes, uh, that's a fine mechanic. I understand that. But in this game, at the beginning with the five decks, you have no idea which cards are gonna be in play because some of the cards are unused, right? There's like 70 some cards, right? and you're playing with uh, maybe like 40 of them, or you know, depends on how many players you're playing with, there's a good chunk of cards that are just not in the game. So really you have no idea which cards are gonna be in that game. So you can't really plan. Like if there are tons of elephants in the game, you're basically, like everyone who gets an elephant is basically screwed, right? I feel like the game would work better if there was a fixed selection of cards. If you knew like, okay, in this game, there are, let's say, I don't know, eight elephants, okay? You know that there are eight elephants that are gonna be in the game no matter what. So that way, if you know, like, okay, I know how many are gonna be left in the game, I don't know which round they're gonna be in, but I know that they're still out there. You can kind of plan more. That seems like it would make more sense because we found so many times, like, in one of the decks, it'd be like, oh, all the elephant cards are here. You're basically choosing, okay, do I wanna take all the elephants or all the elephants. I'm fine with random chance in games. Like I understand that's an element. And I and I understand that it's supposed to be like, okay, maybe neither choice is ideal. That's so you gotta pick the lesser of two evils, that's fine. But in this game, it, there were too many times where it's just like, there's nothing I can do. I'm gonna have to take elephants no matter what. So I guess I'll just lose points. If we were going by my suggestion though, like saying that there was a set number of animals you knew that were gonna be in the game, what would be an awesome little thing would be like if you knew how many of those cards are in the deck. Like on this crocodiles card, like if there was a little number on the bottom that was like six or something, like you know that there are six crocodiles in the, in the whole game, that would make things a little bit easier to plan around. Also in our game, like the vet, the vet card I mentioned that takes away cards, like there was like one of them in the entire game. I don't, I think there are more than one. I don't know because we didn't get to play with all the cards. That feels like it should be like a balancing card to kind of help you if you're screwed with um, getting too many of one animal. But we saw one of them the entire game. So, and it was in the beginning of the game. So the person who got it like couldn't even really use it to effectively. So maybe if there was a mechanic that was like, you can, sacrifice something to get rid of some animals, then the random sort of, you don't know how many of which animal are in the game could be worked around. But the way things are, it's just kind of like, here's the round, oh, all shitty animals. Fuck you, you can't really do anything. I will say the splitting the groups mechanic is a clever idea. I think that's really fun. That was probably my favorite part of the game was like, once like putting the card in the right place and then like trying to like read the other people like what are they gonna pick are they gonna vote for this like i'm looking at their cards they might pick this because it has a card they want but they don't want someone else to get all of these cards that's interesting that mechanic is interesting and i think if the rules were tweaked a bit to balance the randomness of the card draw it would be a lot of fun also that clipboard mechanic is way too confusing. Not confusing in terms of how to learn it, but so with that clipboard, like I said, cards that aren't picked are put under the clipboard, right? So then it just becomes this weird wild bomb of a card filled with all these random cards and it's like, you constantly have to like look under like, okay, which animals are under here? Cause the, it piles up. There can be like six cards under there and you're like, okay, what are animals are in here? Okay, put it here, I don't know. It, it felt 
overly complicated and wasn't really that fun of a mechanic because it was just kind of like a hot potato, hot potato, like pass the clipboard around. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Here's a shitload of animals for you that you don't want. So in my opinion, make it a little less random, get rid of that clipboard and maybe add some other things you can do in your turn because all you're really doing is picking groups. So maybe if there were like balanced ways to try to manage your zoo a little bit better, like maybe trade animals or get rid of animals with the cost, of course, something that you could work out, but just some extra things could give it a little more variety and a little more strategy. Because the way it kind of went down was it's a fun little mind game, but ultimately not very easy to plan or manage or control. However, it's very short, so it's not like it was like an hour and I was like, oh my god, this is agony. It goes by pretty quick. So final verdict, not a big fan of this game, felt way too random. And again, I like having to choose like a management of like, okay, like both situations are bad, which one is better, but this one was like too much random for me. Like, oh, there's six elephants in this deck, okay. Like, there's, there's nothing you can do there. I haven't really found a zoo game. We have this running joke that we've not really found a zoo game that we really liked. Like, we played Zoo Loretto, and this it was okay. We weren't, like, huge fans of it. And this one I'm not a big fan of. But one day we'll find a zoo game we like. That's our goal. All right, thanks to TMG for sending this. See ya.